Hello y'all mushroom foragers and adventure seekers. My name is Nick and I'm about to take you mushroom hunting. We're in Bulgaria in the mountain Stara Planina and we'll be foraging porcini mushrooms. So this is one of my best spots. I've been filling up the truck up to the ceiling with porcini mushrooms several times. I really do hope we get lucky again. So let's dive into the forest. It's a very clean area with no pollutants and it's full of beautiful herbs that fill the air with amazing aroma. I wish you guys could be here to just smell. It's incredible. It's like 100 types of tea. I sometimes get lucky at the very entrance of the forest. So let's check it out. It's beautiful oak trees. Okay, that's a good beginning. Oh, look at this beautiful porcini mushroom. That's a thick one. So, there was an extensive research in Switzerland for 20 years, which concluded that it doesn't matter whether you cut the mushroom with a knife or dig it out of the ground. Actually, with porcini mushrooms, it's even worse to keep parts of the stem in the ground as it starts to rot and it destroys the rest of the mycelium. Mushrooms don't have roots. They're one whole fruit body. So, better to take out the whole fruit body. Also, it will last you longer in the fridge. Woo! In the beginning of season, the first days of June, when we look for porcini mushrooms, we want to look for them in the sunnier spots, around the edges of the forest. That's where most likely they will pop up first. Just spotted another one. This is uh, my favorite porcini mushrooms. There are different types of porcini mushrooms. And this one has a darker cap. Oh, this one is in great condition. This is like the perfect porcini mushroom. They're starting to pick up on some luck. Look at this. So what is a perfect porcini mushroom? It's young. This, is, this part is white. It's very thick and hard. It obviously has no signs of attacks from insects. Uh, a little piece have been chewed off by a slug or a snail. But overall, this is perfect. All we gotta do now is find another 50. There are many types of porcini mushrooms, not all of them edible. There really isn't a highly poisonous porcini mushroom. There's one type you gotta look out for. It's called devil's mushroom. What we have here is not a devil's mushroom, but it's a different type of porcini mushroom. You don't wanna consume because it might give you some gastrointestinal um, discomfort. So check it out. So, as you can see, the stem is red, like fire color over here. If you scar it, it's going to start turning blue. The best way to identify a mushroom is by slicing it in half. You can see the meat is yellow and it starts to turn blue, green. There are quite a few porcini mushroom types which turn their meat blue and are still edible, but I would not recommend 
especially to anyone who's new to foraging wild mushrooms to consume any puccini mushroom that changes color. The real puccini mushroom has a light brown, white-ish stem. Never changes color when you cut it or wound it. In the beginning of season, we usually look for Puccini mushrooms in the sunnier spots. And as the season progresses, you can find them deeper in the forest, in the shady places. But it doesn't matter how much experience you have, there you go, my cameraman just proved me wrong. And in the beginning of season, we found, he found, a nice Puccini mushroom in a shadier spot. Oh, unfortunately, this one is in a very bad condition. As you can see, it has, it's been attacked by parasites. You could try to salvage some parts of it, but uh, I would normally leave this mushroom here, let the spores distribute, help the population. Let's move on. We'll find some better ones. So just to give you a clue, I was here like four nights ago and when it's good weather conditions, it's humid and warm, you can expect a Puccini mushroom to grow and fully develop over like three, four nights. So I was here exactly four days ago, this exact spot, and there was absolutely nothing. So this is a mushroom which is like four days old. You can see this part is starting to turn yellowish. You can forage them even when it's completely green. You just have to take it off and just consume the white part. But this is like in the middle between white, yellowish, greenish. This is still good to eat as it is. This is a nice mushroom. Oh, there's one. Very often you spend the whole day in the forest when they're actually right on the forest paths. Sometimes when wild game like deer and boar walk around, they like to use the paths as well as foragers with baskets. So spores fall near the paths and a beautiful mushroom grows there. Here's another Puccini mushroom, which is not the type you want to eat. It has a very yellowish stem. You can see the difference. This is the edible Puccini and this is something you don't want to forage. It might get you diarrhea, so avoid these. Here's a beautiful Puccini mushroom. You want to look around oak trees right next to the tree or within a couple of feet. This is a nice little baby. It's in great condition. Woo! It goes great with tagliatelle or any type of pasta.
There's always some competition in the forest. This time in the form of this beetle who wants to eat. Okay, little buddy. Go back to what you were doing. Sorry for bothering you. If you're a beginner mushroom forager and all you care about is getting some tasty wild mushrooms for your table, I'd highly recommend foraging only a few types of mushrooms. This way you're not distracting yourself with all the various types and you're able to focus on just a few ones to identify. The best tasting mushrooms are just a few types anyways, porcini, chanterelle, morels, parasol and if in Europe, Caesar's mushroom. I like to pick up the mushrooms as they are, the whole body, this way they last longer in your fridge they stay fresh for longer periods. And I always keep some type of brush, either a toothbrush or anything like it, to just get rid of the excessive dirt and dry leaves. Don't wanna bring unnecessary dirt in my wife's kitchen. very different yellow meat and pink top it's very a very very tasty mushroom get rid of this part it's going to be ideal in the pan very very tasty Puccini mushroom. Look at this little baby. That's amazing. It's a very good practice to forage mushrooms in baskets instead of plastic bags or buckets. When using a basket, you're able to distribute the spores of the mushrooms as you walk around the forest. Through the holes of the basket, spores fall and find their place in the ground. My backpack has an actual basket inside of it and no fabric on the bottom. So the spores are able to reach the forest floor and this way I'm helping the mushroom distribution as I walk around the forest. It was a beautiful day in the mountains of Stara Planina in Bulgaria. The beginning of Puccini season, I think we did well. Some good variety, Puccini mushrooms, chanterelles. Beautiful forests. Enjoy your time in the outdoors and have fun guys. If you like my content, please subscribe to my channel. I promise you, 
some very good mushroom foraging adventures, some bow hunting, archery, and some fishing. <laughs>